welcome to this series of webinar films called The People's Perspective. It's a new initiative that we've followed in order to give you some insight into the journeying beyond Salisbury Cathedral School. You're going to be meeting some former pupils uh, in their own settings in their new senior schools and also meeting their respective head teachers. Uh, I've really enjoyed catching up with these former pupils and finding out about all the exciting opportunities that they've been exposed to in their new settings. And I'm sure that you will enjoy it as much as I did. You'll find it very informative, but it's also very relaxed and uh, it will hopefully uh, provide you with an opportunity to explore further your choices for your son or daughter at 13. Well, it's, it's great today to be joined uh, by Ben Vesey, who's the headmaster of Canford School and two former pupils of Salisbury Cathedral School. Uh, we've got Max and Maddie with us. Uh, welcome to you both and thank you for your time today. I'm not quite sure which lessons you're missing, uh, but this, this is going to be a wonderful opportunity to hear your perspective. We're calling uh, this series of webinars The Pupil's Perspective. Uh, because we're very keen uh, for the parents who are currently in Salisbury Cathedral School to hear your perspective about Canford and also of course the transition moving between Salisbury Cathedral School and uh, Canford School. So uh, we're going to be putting you on the spot Max and Maddie in a while and asking you some really searching questions and of course we're really keen uh, for you to be as honest as you feel you can be uh, about, uh, about anything. Uh, because the parents here will really uh, enjoy uh, listening uh, to your uh, thoughts and views. So thank you for that. Uh, but I also am uh, very grateful, uh, Ben, to you. Um, it's worth um, uh, mums and dads knowing that, that Ben uh, was, I think, one of the very few senior school headmasters who was very quick to uh, contact me at the start of the last lockdown and ask me how things were and offer help. And I haven't forgotten that, Ben. Uh, that meant a great deal to me and uh, that, that sort of uh, gesture of reaching out in a time of need was, was really, uh, really uh, welcome. So thank you for that. Uh, if I may then start um, by just asking you to describe for us uh, perhaps something about the ethos of, of Canford and your approach to education. Absolutely. Um, well, perfect planning, of course, in terms of education in that, that Maddie and Max are not actually missing any lessons at all because they're giving up their break time. So... Uh... <laughs> That's, uh, there we go. It's all about your learning, isn't it? But this is great for them as well. And thank you so much to, uh, to you, Clive, and to Salisbury Cathedral School and parents uh, for, um, you know, giving us this opportunity to talk to you. Um, I mean, I'd like to just sort of start really by, by sort of citing our, our vision statement, I suppose. I mean, that we, we are very much a, a school community where um, all are inspired to, to explore. They're empowered to express and challenge to excel and, and whilst that might sort of seem like a, a small number of words I, I think the sort of four key elements of that which I want to sort of draw out are um, that sense of, of, of being inspired to explore and what that is very much about is, is having a, um, a, a sort of a per sense of purposeful engagement it's very much about not just what you do but what you learn from what you do. Um, you know, it's very easy to say, well, I'm going off to do sport or hockey or whatever, but what actually does that mean? Or I'm studying history, you know, what does it mean? And obviously in the times we're in at the moment, you know, a really good awareness of, of, of history and, and, and all those sort of subjects that, that pupils learn in and out of the classroom is really important. So I think that sense of, of inspiring pupils to explore the world around them, themselves and so on is, is a key part of what we do. Um, that sort of empowerment to, to express, and I think, you know, that's playing itself out uh, very much across the, uh, across the pond at the moment, where, you know, you really need to, to show courage uh, and have a sort of courageous attitude in the way that you, um, that you express yourself and to be, to be strong and principled, um, but at the same time to, to, to be aware that others have different views and to enable them to express those and of course, expressing those views can take multiple forms. It's not just what you say, but it's how you conduct yourself, uh, how you engage with others. So I think that's a very important element for us as well. Uh, and that sense of, of challenging people to, to excel. And, you know, none of us, I mean, I, I have to say I, was, I, I wasn't I was an A student at school um, in any sense of the word, um, although I love my history. 
Um, yeah, but obviously, ex ex excellence takes many different forms in different ways for, for different individuals. And what we really want to do is, I think, for pupils to be ambitious, to really challenge themselves in lots of different ways, academically, intellectually, but in, in lots of other ways too. Um, but to do that in a way which is, is humble, where, where we're, we're not sort of walking over other people or, or ignoring their views and so on. So to pursue those ambitions and those aspirations, but in a way that shows, shows humility. So I think those, those sort of things are very important to us. And then that all wraps up with what I'll talk a little bit about later maybe is that sense of, of, of community, because in a community, you need to show leadership in lots of different ways. Um, and it, not just in a formal sense, but just, you know, day, day by day on little things, but to ensure that that leadership is, is gracious um, and, and where it shows care and consideration for um, others around us, you know, whether that's in your immediate community or, or more widely. So I think that's very much what our, 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 our ethos is uh, and that underpins, you know, the learning and, and the, the education that we seek to put in place. Ben, thank you very much indeed for your honesty and for your, uh, your clear insight and clearly uh, the vision comes across very uh, passionately in, in how you uh, express uh, the vision statement of the school. Th th thank you for that. Um, for parents perhaps taking a look at Canford for the first time, I know that one of the key things of course that they would want to look at is, is the overarching composition of the school in terms of gender balance, in terms of um, how the boarding works, Obviously, at the moment, we're all working in bubbles. Uh, you talked about community, and, and I know myself how important that is. And it's quite challenging at the moment uh, to ensure that everything knits together. But just perhaps tell us a, a, a bit about the sort of overarching facts and figures of the school. And, and, and uh, as, as I say, the gender balance is something that parents will want to know about and how that all works. Absolutely. Um... We are, we're around 650 strong, and, and um, those numbers have held well uh, from, from the beginning of this term, which is, which is wonderful. Um, you know, we are very fortunate to be in that position and, and to have a lot of interest and, and, you know, and to have waiting lists as well, which is, is a nice position to be in. We are around 65% boarding, about 35% day, and we're around 55% boys and 45% girls, and that sort of fluctuates a little bit depending on the, the day the day composition. We're also around 10% um, international students, of which around 5% are non-UK passport holders. Um, and they come from around 14 different countries. So that's the sort of composition of, of, of the school. I mean, you talk interestingly there about the, the sense of integration. And at this particular point, you know, we're obviously always looking for ways to, to ensure that pupils can connect and, and, and that staff likewise, you know, those relationships are so important. So that's something that's in our minds every single day. Um, in terms of day and boarding, uh, I mean, we are very much, I, I would say, a school with houses um, rather than the other way around. And, and just to sort of you know, clarify that a little bit, you know, the house is really obviously really important base for pupils, but an awful lot of what we do is, is done as a school and, and, and it's done centrally. So the way we dine, the way that our days are structured and, and can be you know, put together so that actually day pupils, boarders, boys, girls, you know, the vast bulk of what they do is, is actually together. Um, and so that sort of sense of integration, I, I mean, I speak as a parent of, of an old, old Canfordian and two current ones, and, you know, they've got friends who are boarders, friends who are, they're both boys, but all, all boys, but they've got friends who are girls, you know, that sort of thing. So, you know, as a parent, I've seen that sort of integration work, um, you know, in, in lots of different ways. Thank you. That's extremely helpful. Um, I'm going to ask uh, now Maddie and Max perhaps to just tell us a little bit about the journey that, that, that you might remember from prep school, from Salisbury Cathedral School to Canford. Tell, tell us, um, you know, be honest, what, what was it like? Uh, how did you have to adapt? And what, what have been the most um, uh, sort of exciting opportunities that, that you found at Canford that perhaps weren't available uh, to you at, at Salisbury? And, and perhaps how did Salisbury Cathedral School prepare you for uh, life at Canford? Uh, I'm going to be a gentleman. I'm going to ask um, Maddie to start and Max, if you'd kindly follow, perhaps uh, that should give you a few uh, uh, clues or she might even steal your thunder, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Maddie, thank you. Um. So I was a chorister at the cathedral school, so definitely it taught me organisation skills, which were very crucial when starting um, Camford. 
Um, I would say definitely, of course, it's physically very different. It's bigger, a lot bigger, but the community is just as tight knit, which I think I was quite worried about. I was worried a big school, lots of people, but actually it's not a worry or, or a concern. Um, you, and in your houses, you're really close, so you have your best friend group anyway, but doing different activities, you can meet loads of other people, like especially in the shells, you are able to do a wide range of activities. So there's like set sports and stuff and Monday activities, so you really get to meet everyone and then you're not just within one house, you get to meet everyone in your year, which is really nice. Thank you, that's extremely useful, Maddie. Thank you very much indeed. Max? Um, yeah, so definitely, when, when I arrived in Shells, we had this thing called Shell Carousel, which is loads of different activities that you change every, every week. So you go around doing different activities with a different group of people. So you really get to know everyone really well then. So yeah, I knew most people within the first week of arriving. Yeah, and then the boarding, yeah, it was, it was really good. When we arrived and stuff, obviously everyone was a bit nervous, but we soon all just went outside, got to know each other in our house really quickly. And then it's all really good from there once you get to know your house really well. Yeah. Thank, thank you both. Could I, could I ask you, um, either of you to chip in here, um, what, what might we have done better here to, to, to prepare you? Is there something that we perhaps uh, could build in um, for our leavers so that when they get to their next school that they are even better prepared than, than you two were? I'd probably say organisational key. Uh, organisational skills are very key. How to manage your time well um, because then it means you can fit as much as you can into your timetable which is a good thing to be able to do. Thank you Maddie for your honesty. Max can you think of anything that would have helped? Um, probably the same, yeah, organisation and guess, and just knowing when you have to do stuff and you have to do your prep this time because you're going to, you know, you're going to get more prep the next day. So working out when you need to do everything. So you've got everything done. Yeah. Thank you. That's, that's, that's really helpful. Thank you both for your honesty. Uh, Bennett, I wonder if I can come back to you. Maddie and Max have talked, um, actually uh, about, um, opportunities and and enrichment could you just drill down a little bit for us regarding the academic ethos of Canford um, is, is it all about um, uh, uh, exam results and facts and figures obviously from what Maddie and Max have, have implied it doesn't appear to be but obviously the academic standards uh, are very important uh, I, I know that but just tell us a bit more if you could please Absolutely. I mean, just, just before I do that, I just say you, you, I think Salisbury Cathedral School did a pretty good job, actually, because because Maddie Maddie is my head girl, so she uh, she's clearly clearly uh, ticked all those boxes and and much more. And and I have to say, Max was brilliant last year because I taught him in the shells, and he always got his prepping on time. So uh, did, did did very well there. Yeah, I mean, I think the you know, and when I talk about academic, I'm going to talk about academic and intellectual because I think it's really important that those those two words go hand in hand people often associate the sort of the academic with uh, you know sort of exam based subjects and that kind of thing I mean I think yeah we have to be realistic we're in a in a world where you know at least to this point what will change going forward who knows as we have center assessed grades and everything else but um, yeah we are in a world where, where those those qualifications are, are important and and yes we do put emphasis on those because you know they are keys to doors uh, and, and you know and I'm delighted when I see you know we're a selective school but we do have a range of ability um, you know when, when those results come through in a, in a, in a summer I, I, I look as much at the the lower low, sort of lower end as I do at the top end and the ability range and, and it's always really exciting when you see how people have flourished and and, and pushed on so you know those results are, are important but I, I, I would say that um, you know we we take a real pride and, 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 and you know, a huge amount of delight when you see pupils intellectually grow in lots of different ways and, and I think you know that that comes through both both the, the curriculum based subjects where yes there's preparation for exams but there are also all sorts of, of sort of off-piste academic experiences intellectual experiences that come through those different departments faculties run all sorts of different opportunities in that sense you have sort of smack which is science maths and computing 
uh, and, and you have people delivering talks there and having debates and discussions on various sort of things. You've got things like the sort of Seroptimists, where which is about sort of um, um, getting women into into engineering, and so people's work on that through the science side of things, through physics and so on. Um, you know, and, and we do. I mean, you know, one thing Maxwell have experienced last year. We introduced it since Maddie was in the shells, but the the shell projects. Uh, are very much designed to pull that, that learning together across a range of different academic subjects. So at the moment, my shell group, together with all the shells, are about to embark on the, uh, the Propaganda Live project, where they've got to sort of choose a, a, a character from, from history, recent history in some cases, um, and, and then put together a propaganda campaign with sort of things that are performed and visual and spoken and, and so on, um, you know, as a, as a team. Uh, and, and then they are sort of, you know, they're sort of assessed on, on the quality of their propaganda campaigns. But that draws music, drama, English, history together. Early next term, they'll be doing uh, one where they have to design and build and then demonstrate a, a delivery robot. Uh, and then, you know, put together a, com a company with marketing and investment um, appeal around that. So that, that sort of academic curriculum takes lots of different forms, you know, and on, on, on Wednesday night this week, you know, I, I was I was really fortunate to to go and watch some of our lower sick delivering TED talks to the fourth form, where they were talking about hydrofoiling. Um, we've had you know crusades and c comedy writing, uh, so those lower sick you know areas of real sort of intellectual interest that they pursued. They put together a a short talk and then there's a Q and A, and you get three of those in those sessions. Really good role modelling for the younger pupils, of course. Um, but really stretches them to, you know, to, to, to ask good questions and so on as well. So, you know, that academic side takes, um, you know, and, and the intellectual element is pretty broad. Um, yes, exams are part of it, but it's very much about getting them to think out of the box, to use their intellectual sort of capabilities and stretch those in lots of different ways. Gosh, Brad, that sounds tremendously exciting. Ma Maddie and Max, I wonder if you could just uh, chip in here and, and just give us any, any personal experiences of any of the academics, the um, the intellectual aspects uh, that Mr. Vesey was just talking about. What 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 sticks out in your mind? What have you particularly been inspired by at Canford in this respect? Um, well, I did I did the shell projects, which were which were really good. So I did, yeah, the history one was probably the best. That was music history and classics, I think. But that was really good. So we got to create our own Wrong, song and everything. Yeah. Um, and then we wrote a speech or two in history about everything. And then it's really good because it like broadens your horizon and you get to learn stuff that you probably wouldn't have learned in normal curriculum, which is really good. And then we get to perform it in front of not a whole year, but a part of our year, which is really good. Thank you, Max. Ma Maddie, can you uh, remember an occasion that you particularly enjoyed? Um, I've been part of like a society called Heretics. So it meets probably once every half term. And so one person speaks about a topic that they're particularly passionate about. So there have been lots of different things about, uh, one boy did something about bombs and how they, they kind of bounce on water, which was really interesting. Um, and then especially in the sixth form, every Friday afternoon, we have an external speaker coming in and talking about a variety of different like things. So just, yeah, again, like broadens your horizons about lots of different topics, which are very interesting. I mean, that is remarkable. Both of you, uh, you, you just seem so enthusiastic about it all. How do you fit it all in? Uh, do, do, you, do you have time to actually uh, just step back and, and, and relax? When, when, when do you have time for that? Um, well, we have lots of time at break, which is good. So not, we have... 10, 20 minutes back at house every break time, which is nice. But then normally, depending on what day, if it's Wednesday or Friday, lessons finish at 4.25 or something like that. And then we have all the time till six to do whatever we would like. Because those days we don't have first prep. And then, yeah, and then from six, it's dinner. But then after dinner, you can do whatever you'd like until 7.30. And then, after the second prep session, you can also do whatever you like. So there's plenty of time to do what you like to do. Go outside on the Astro, meet people from other houses when it's not COVID times. And yeah. Thank you, Max. And I suppose that links to what Maddie was saying earlier about being organised and knowing how to, to best use that time. 
uh, and, and knowing when to actually uh, take a bit of time out and, and, and relax. And on that subject, Ben, could I ask you about pastoral care? Because it's, it's a subject that obviously parents uh, are very, very uh, concerned about and, and they want to find out at the chalk face what, what things are really like when the child gets homesick, um, when uh, there is bullying. Uh, and as you know, Ben, uh, any head who says there isn't bullying in, the, in their school is, is, is telling a fib because sadly bullying happens everywhere, but it's how it's dealt with, as, as you and I know. And, and how do you manage um, technology? Because um, uh, cyberbullying, as, as, as you well know, is, is, is an area of great concern uh, for us as educators. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think the start point really is, is, is that sort of ethos and, and, and the culture that, that, that you create. And I think, you know, I talked earlier about some of those sort of values and, and the things that we, we put emphasis on and, 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 and that sense of, of, of community. Um, so I think, you know, if you get those sort of things right, it, it, it's a good start point. And, and of course, you know, pastoral care, well-being, a lot of that really relies on, on those sort of informal, that informal sort of flow of, of relationships and, and communication and so on in, in, in just day to day um sort of connections as i say those sort of values you put it on i think also you know the size of the school our sort of composition we're, we're big enough to do lots and lots of things but we're not so big i think that that people get lost i mean i know pretty much all the people's names um so it's a lot easier to get them to tuck their shirt in or to, to praise them when they're doing all their good things and so on um but i think you know though that that and, and that's something that when we've had inspection and that kind of thing they they comment on it are the strength of those relationships where people look after and look out for each other so I think if you get those sorts of things right, um, you know, that, that really helps because people talk and people communicate and they engage and that approachability. We, we obviously have lots of more sort of formal structures and systems in place to, to support pupils, you know, through the house system with tutors. We've got a great chaplaincy. Uh, we just put a new peer mentoring program in place as well. Um, you know, there, there, there are lots of avenues um, that, that provide that support where, where there is active engagement with, with the pupils and also, you know, I was going to say squaring the triangle, but that would be wrong. You know, connecting the four, <laughs> to tell I wasn't a mathematician, connecting the three sides of the triangle where you've got parent and pupil and, and school staff, you know, where that communication is, is effective and that that's sort of preemptive as well as reactive. So I think, you know, there's lots of stuff formally in, in place there. Uh, and you're quite right. I think any anybody, any any head, or or, or indeed the head of any organisation, whether that's educational or, or or with adults, who tells you that they don't have issues like bullying and 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 uh, you know other other issues related to to people's well-being, you know, would be would be lying. And and you should never, you know, I would I would always challenge that if somebody said it. We're we're a microcosm of society here. We have all the same sort of issues that that, that crop up, and we have people who you know, who get it wrong, who make bad judgments. Um, you know, fortunately, very rarely are those you know, coming from a malicious or malign perspective, um, but occasionally they are, and you, and you have to sort of work with that. And I think the key thing there is you, you know, you have, you have, you have that culture, you, you, you have your systems. You know, what we then tend to do is where, you know, issues arise, we, we will look at those on a case by case basis. Yes, you've got a policy and a framework to work within. Um, but every case is different. Um, and I think that's really important to look at, you know, to research to investigate, to engage, to talk, you know, to build up as clear a picture as, as you can. I mean, I, I was involved with a scenario a couple of years ago, where we had a, a, gr a group of boys in the house who, who were not being particularly kind to each other. Um, I think it, it was something where it started off as a little bit of this and that, and then it, it, it kind of just escalated, uh, and we we got sort of wind of that. And actually, what we eventually what we did was we, we we sat them down and and got them to write anonymously their views on everything that had been going on, uh, and that presented some really really interesting insights. What we then did was was engage with those those boys as a group. Um, you know, in a sort of no blame way. And we, we sat there and identified the issues and the themes and the behaviors that were there. And with them and using two or three of the older students in the house, we put together an agreement that set out the way that they felt, you know, they should be working with each other and, and engaging with each other going forwards. And they all signed that. And we sent that home to parents and enlisted their support as well. 
um, and we had regular sort of you know follow-ups to that and um, you know and actually it made it made a tremendous difference so that was a situation where you know you looked at something I mean there was you know behind that there was a very clear message that if they didn't engage actively with that or if individuals didn't you know there would be you know there would be so they had choices and there would be different consequences if if, if that engagement didn't come so I think, you know, in that sense, um, you know, it's about the culture, it's about being clear, it's about having the support, and then it's about looking at cases and, and, and taking things seriously and, and working those through in the right way, looking at choices, consequences, education, reward, sanction, where those things come in in an appropriate way. Uh, I mean, in terms of technology, uh, you know, again, I mean, sort of, you know, digital misbehavior we, we look at it in exactly the same way and we we have very close relationships with the local local school police school safer uh, um, education team they, they they come in from time to time and, and obviously give education but also we've had their support with individual cases where you know those sort of cyber issues have arisen um, and very often it, again it is just ignorance and a lack of thought rather than something that's malign malicious but but sometimes it isn't and you obviously got to follow those through accordingly um in terms of technology you know it, it's a big thing what we find is that a lot of the pupils are coming from schools where they, they they don't have access to phones and that kind of thing so two three years ago we put a new program in place where you know the shells and forths had had much tighter access we control the access much more tightly to 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 their mobile phones and so on during the day and the evenings for borders um, we, we removed sort of phone, you know, phone presence, if you like, in the dining hall and, um, you know, continue to work on, on people not walking around staring at their phones. You still get transgressors. Uh, you've only got to walk around the streets of any town. That's a, a societal issue, but we, we work on that. Uh, and that rate made a real difference, actually. We found that sort of people's engage with each other much more actively um, face to face and conversations in the dining hall. So. You know, and, and, and then that sort of scaffolded and just sort of, you know, we re remove some of the pillars and hand that responsibility a little bit more so that they are managing their technology rather than it managing them. And thank you very much for your honesty. I know that parents at home will really appreciate that, uh, that very clear insight uh, to life um, at, at Canford on, on, a, on a pastoral front. Um, I know that we're, we're, we're sort of against the clock um, uh, now, so I'm just going to uh, just ask uh, two further questions, if I may, uh, to Max and Maddie. Uh, first of all, about boarding uh, and what you feel are the benefits of, of, of a boarding uh, ethos. And just has, tell us a little bit about how it works in terms of exiats, uh, meal times, weekends, and the like. So, if, if, if I could ask Maddie, could you start, please? Um, so, I actually started Camford as a day girl. Um, so I did that for the first three weeks and then basically just really wanted to board. Um, I thought, I think from being a day girl at Salisbury, I was worried that I'd be far away from home and my parents were too far away and I couldn't do it. And then I realised how much fun all the boarders were having and I knew that I really wanted to get involved. So the boarding side, it's about 50%. So you spend 50% of your weekends in and then you can take 50% of them out. But a lot of people don't really choose to go out because there's so much going on. Um, so there's like activities which are organized on Sundays, which means that you can do lots of things like there's pizza making and different sporting activities, which you can get involved with. But you don't even need to do that. You can use that time to walk into Wimborne, see your friends. So you've got like a wide variety of things you can do in a weekend. It's not really set in stone, which I really like. Thank you, Maddie. And Max, how, how have you taken to, to boarding? And how much boarding do you actually do at the moment? Um, so yeah, I pretty much do the same. So pretty much only really go home at Exiats and the occasional weekend. But I think SES really helped me coming to board, so especially going on the um, South Africa trip. That really got me ready for coming here. So it wasn't too much of a shock once I got here, which was really nice. But yeah, boarding's really good because especially on Saturday nights, you can order in Domino's Pizza. And then um, and then we normally in a house, we either just go outside, watch a film together, play on the Xbox sometimes, which is really good. Oh, that, 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 sounds, like a, that sounds like a great idea. So that sounds like you're both having a, a lot of fun there. Um, finally, just tell us a bit, Max and Maddie, about co-curricular activities 
uh, what, what, what else is going on? What do you uh, yourselves uh, uh, take part in? And, and, and again, when, when is all this fitted in with everything else that's going on in your very busy and exciting lives? Maddie. Um, so I do a lot of music. Having my musical background, I couldn't come here and not do any music. So I'm involved quite heavily within the music school, uh, which is really nice because there's, there's a nice community in there. Uh, all the staff are really friendly and they really support um, your kind of musical journey, which is really nice. But I'm not just limited to music. So I do a lot of sport. So um, even in the shells and fourth form, when you're set to do sports, it's a great opportunity to get to know everyone in your year. But in the sixth form, you have like a, a bigger, wider range. So I do lacrosse, for instance, which is really nice. Um, but yeah, lots of different like activities which you can do, which is good. Thank you, Maddie. And Max, what about you? Um, yeah, I mainly do sport, so that's really good. So that happens every Tuesday, well, for fourth form, it happens every Tuesday, Thursday, and then Saturday, which is really good. It's a lot of time for sport, and the sessions, sessions are about an hour and a half each, so it's definitely a lot of time in the week for sport. And then also in shells, I managed to do rowing, which I've never done before. I really wanted to try that, so that was really good. So there's lots of opportunities to try. Well, enormous thanks to Canford, in particular to Mr. Ben Vesey, the headmaster for his time today uh, with this webinar, and of course to our former pupils, Max and Maddie. It's really good to have seen how well you're doing at Canford, and thank you for the time that you've shared with us today. Good luck to you with your continued studies. All the very best. Bye-bye.